In section 12.2, we'll be focusing on finding the surface area of pyramids. After watching this video, you'll be able to find both the lateral and total surface area of a pyramid. A pyramid has only one base. Its lateral edges needed a single point called the vertex. The base of the pyramid can be any type of polygon, but the lateral faces or sides will always be triangles. So we can have a triangular pyramid in which the base is a triangle, a pentagonal pyramid in which the base is a pentagon, or a rectangular pyramid in which the base is a rectangle, just to name a few. Please note that each pyramid is going to be named by its base. When we talk about finding the lateral area of a pyramid, we are going to find the area of the triangles that make up the lateral faces. So we could go about finding the lateral area of a pyramid by finding the area of each individual triangle and then adding them all up. But I'm going to show you a shortcut today on how to find the lateral area of a pyramid that's regular. So a pyramid that has a regular polygon as its base. So the formula that we are going to derive in just a moment can only be used for a regular pyramid. So if the base is a regular polygon. A rectangular pyramid, one that's not a regular pyramid, I'm going to do an example of that later on in the notes. Okay, so it'll be the last example. So you want to make sure that you tune in for that. Let's take a look at these components that I'm highlighting here. If we think back to section 9.8, the red segment is called the altitude or the general height of the pyramid. The blue segment is the slant height of the pyramid or the height of one of the triangles, one of the faces. And then the yellow segment here is what we call a lateral edge. Please note that if we connect any two of those segments, we could create some right triangles. So if you connect the altitude to the slant height with the segment being drawn in the base, we'd create a right triangle there that's propped up inside of the pyramid. Once again, to find the lateral area of this pyramid, it's going to be the area of the triangles which form the faces. But instead of going through and finding the area of each separate triangle and adding them up, since this is a regular polygon, we could take a shortcut and say that if we could find the area of one of the triangles and then multiply it by however many triangles we have, since all of the triangles are congruent, since the regular pyramid, a square pyramid, then we find the lateral area by doing that. So for the sake of the problem, I'm going to call one side of the base x, as you can see here, and then I'm going to call the slant height l. So to find the area of one of the triangles, we do one half of our base x times our slant height l. And then we can multiply it by however many triangles we have, since all of the triangles are congruent, since it's a regular pyramid. Let's take a look at the diagram over here to the right. What I've done here is I've taken the pyramid on the left and I split it at the vertex so that all of the lateral faces are now lying on the ground with the base. So we said that the length of the side of the base is x, which is the base of the triangle. But since this is a regular pyramid, it's a regular square pyramid, we could say all four sides are congruent. So we could call each side x. And then since those lateral faces or triangles are congruent, we could call all of the heights l because they share that same slant height. So we know that we have four triangles total, and we can find the area of each triangle by doing one half of our base times our height, or one half x times l. But let's derive a formula here. Let's take a look at this. What is 4x? Let's look over here at the diagram at the right. 4x is simply the perimeter of our base. So we can replace that with p in our formula. And since this is multiplication, we could just bring down the times l in times one half. So anytime we're working with a regular pyramid, to find the lateral area, we could do one half of the perimeter of the base times the slant height, and that'll work every time. If the pyramid is not regular, let's say the base is a rectangle, then we cannot use this formula. So like I said, the last example that we take a look at in our notes today, I'll show you how to solve it if it's not a regular pyramid. To find the total area of any pyramid, we're going to take the lateral area, so the areas of the triangles, and then add on the area of the one base, whatever shape it may be. So if it's a regular pyramid, we could do one half of the perimeter of the base times the slant height plus the base. Let's take a look at the first example together. So for this example, we should be thinking about the fact that this is a regular pentagonal pyramid. So we should use our formula that we derived today, which states that we could find the lateral area by doing one half of the perimeter of the base times the slant height, since all of those triangles or lateral faces are congruent, since it's a regular pyramid. Let's fill in what we know. We know that the apothem is a length of four, that BC is a length of six, and that our slant height is 14. So at this point, we're really just substituting in the given information and solving. So to find the lateral area, we could do one half of the perimeter of our base, 
which is 30, since one side is 6, and then we have 5 sides total. And then our slant height is 14. So we're doing one half of 30 times 14, which is 210 units squared. Now let's take a look at finding the area of our base. We have to determine how to do that using some prior knowledge. Well, since this base is a regular pentagon, it's a regular polygon, so we find the area of that by doing one half of the apothem times the perimeter. The apothem they give us is 4, and the perimeter of our base is 30. So our base area is 60 units squared. And then finally, to find the total area, we're going to take our lateral area, which is the area of all the triangles, and then add on the area of our base, which is our regular polygon here. So if we do 210 plus 60, we end up getting 270 units squared for the total area. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes and do some more example problems in just a moment.